Hi. All right, here we go, wrapping it up. Okay, so here I am sharing. Okay, so we're looking at our last piece of our lesson, which is our odds. Going from odds to probability and back again. So we're gonna be doing some conversions. This is probably going to be a little fun. I think it is. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, two types of odds. And we usually do, um, they come in two types normally. So the two types that we're going to be looking at, make sure my pencil is good. Uh -huh. All right, so the two types that we're going to be looking at are going to be, Odds in favor, you've heard of this before. And then the second kind, odds against. Now, again, we've heard of this before. You probably never calculated it. It's fine. We're gonna learn it this time, okay? So when we look at odds in favor, when we see it written, we're going to use a certain setup. And we usually use a colon to represent this. So when we read it from left to right, you've again seen <clears throat> it written in many ways and we're gonna look at the different forms. But we're looking at favorable to unfavorable. Okay, you've probably seen it with the colon here. And this would be unfavorable to favorable, okay? Three ways to write them. So of course, we're not gonna do all of them, but this is how you can write odds. So one of the ways, again, using your colon, so you have A to B. Now you say it the same way every time, A to B. So you can write it using your colon. You could actually write it using the word to. So A to B, okay? Or you can write it as a fraction. And because we're doing probability and probabilities in fraction form, we're not gonna use the fraction form, but you can write it as A over B, which can also represent it as A to B, all right? We are not going to be using this form, so we will not use the fractional version of writing odds. So this one we won't use, okay? So we will probably use, uh, we will be using this colon form. We could use the A to B with the words, but you probably would not see it on your um, test or your homework. You'll, um, if you've already done the homework, you'll see that they actually have the portal set up where you have the opening with the colon and then the second opening for you to fill in your answer. And that's how your test is gonna be set up as well. So I'm expecting for us to use this form when we're writing our odds, okay? But again, this is acceptable here. This is how it's said or pronounced, but this is how we're going to write it. So we're going to use this form, okay? Let's now look at our odds circle. So when we're writing or looking at our odds and we're going from um, probability to odds and back again. We're going to use our uh, odds triangle and it's going to make our life a whole lot easier. Once we understand what's happening in the triangle, we'll see that there's again some correlations happening between our previous units and some symbols. So let's talk about it. Here's our triangle. So you have three circles, two at the top and one at the bottom. The top two represents your odds. The first one, odds in favor. The second one, 
unfavorable. So odds against, right? So favorable, unfavorable. The circle at the bottom represents your total number. These two numbers in these two circles add up to be this total. You'll be given two of these three circles. And if you're given two of these three circles, you can find the third circle by simply doing a little subtraction or some adding. All right, and we're gonna see how that works with our um, information as they, it depends on what they give us. Here you have N of E. So N of E means this event is favorable. Event, you see this um, apostrophe there, that means not that event. So if you think that's a correlation between our uh, previous unit where we're looking at not something, and we use, um, when we did, um, uh, oh gosh, I just had a blank. Um, we wrote our, I gotta look at my notes. When we were way back looking at our sets, we were using our C to represent our uh, complement. That's what it was, complement. So it's kind of like the same thing. So complement we know means not, right? That's not in or not happening. So they're using that same symbol, symbol here, okay? So the um, probability of or um, the fact of this event not happening. And then this is the cardinality of the total number of the event. So N of means that cardinality, so to speak, of the total um, ways that this event can happen, not happen, and then the total. All right, so then you see that you have these lines connecting these two circles up at the top. You see coming from the first circle to the second one is odds in favor. Coming from the second circle to the first circle is odds against. So if you wanna go and find out what the odds in favor of something, you would go from left to right. If you wanna know what's the um, odds against something happening, you would go right to left. All right, then we see coming down the sides is P of the event, probability event happening. Here, down the uh, right side, probability of the event not happening. So in order to go from odds to probability, you're gonna come and do a downward motion from the top circle to the total circle. So the probability of an event happening comes from this favorable circle down to the total. Probability of an event not happening comes from unfavorable down to the total. Right? So this number over this total. Favorable, this number over the total. So odds go across, probability comes down. Now it's not clearly marked here, but you go down motion here, coming down here, right? All right, so now we've kind of gone over the circle, parts and what they mean. Let's kind of put it into action. So it says, suppose we are given the probability of an event. So they're giving us the probability of an event, P of E as three sevenths. So the probability we know the total is the denominator, and we're dealing with probability, all right? So the probability of the event happening is three over the total number of seven. So probability three over seven, that means we're coming from this favorable circle going down to our total. Our total is seven, so that would go here. And the probability of it happening would come here in our favorable circle would be a three. So three over seven is the probability of this event happening, all right? Now that we filled in our circle with the information that they give us, they want us to find this stuff. So 
what can we find? Find the probability of the event not happening. They want us to find the probability of this not happening. Now, they only gave us two pieces of the information. We need to find this missing circle. Remember I told you that these two circles add up to be the total. If they gave us the total of seven, and we know that this circle has three in it, seven minus three leaves us how many for this circle? That's right, four. Is everybody all right with that? So again, this is seven minus three gives us four, okay? Now that we've filled in all of our circles, we can do whatever we want. So the probability of the event not happening, remember, that would be from this top circle going down, would be four over seven. So four sevenths. All right. Okay. Now, the odds in favor of the event happening. So remember, odds in favor comes from this top circle going to the right. So odds in favor would be three to four, yeah? But then odds against the event happening, we would start at the right and work our way to the left. So four to three. Okay, does everybody see what we're doing? We started out with two pieces of information that they gave us, which was the probability of the event happening. We filled it in to our table, right? So three over seven. We found the missing piece by subtracting three from seven, that gave us four. Remembering that these two top circles add up to be the total number. Then they asked us these questions. Probability of the event not happening would be coming from our top circle here, our unfavorable circle, coming down to our total. So this number divided by the total. Odds in favor of the event, E. So in favor would go from left to right. So three to four. Odds against the event happening would come from right to left. So four to three. Pretty simple, right? Okay, let's try the next one. Suppose the odds in favor, now they're telling us what they're giving us, odds in favor of an event are five to three. Find the following. So first things first. Take the information they're giving you and you got to put it into the right place. Now they're giving us this structure and we're going to label it. So suppose the odds in favor of the event are, okay? So here's our favorable. <clears throat> not favorable and your total okay so we've labeled now whatever the thing is going on it could be a race it could be whatever you'll label your circles so they didn't give us anything so we're just going to go favorable not favorable total keep it simple so they're telling us suppose the odds in favor so we know that we're going to go from left to right, right? When we label this, so we know we're gonna have a five and a three. Because it told us in favor. So that would be from five to three. Now when we add this up, we can get our total, which will be eight. Is everybody good? All right, so now let's answer the questions. They want us to find the probability of the event happening. 
the probability of E, again, that goes in a downward motion over here, right? So probability of event right, is 5 over 8. Okay, and then the probability of an uh, event not happening is here. So probability of event not happening is three over eight. Hmm, having a hard time writing those eights. Okay. Then they want to know what's the odds against event E. So odds against would be coming from our right going to our left. So that would be, yep, three to five. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, let's go to the next page. This is where you pause the video and try these next ones on your own. Okay, try number 27, and then we can see what's happening with number 28 together. Okay, let's go ahead and check ourselves with number 27. It says, given a standard deck of cards and considering the event E to be drawing a heart, uh, find each of the following. So here we have a standard deck of cards. How many cards are in a standard deck of cards again? 52. So we know we're talking about 52 total cards. Then the event that we're talking about is to be drawing a heart. So I'm going to label my other circles heart. No heart. Sounds like the Tin Man from the Wiz. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. So heart, no heart. So now we know what the total is. How many hearts are in a deck of cards? Think about your suits. All right. Thirteen. So tell me how many cards in the deck that are not hearts? Uh huh. 39. So we know we're talking about a standard deck of cards. That's 52, and that's our total. The event is drawing a heart. So that means that we have to write the probability or the total number of opportunities that we could get a heart would be 13. So then not a heart would be all the cards that are not hearts. That would be 39. All right. So we've labeled. Now we're ready to answer our questions. What's the probability of getting a heart? So the probability of getting a heart would be mm -hmm, 13 over 52, which we know reduces to one fourth. Okay. All right. And then probability of the event not happening would be 39 over 52. Does that reduce to anything? Yes, three fourths. You see how fast it goes once you have your circles, right? You're just looking and you, based on what they're asking you, looking at the direction. Odds are across, probability is going down, right? Odds in favor of the event, we know is, okay, so 13 to 39. Now, if you can simplify your odds, you'll do it, just like you would simplify your probability. So 13 to 39, remember it can be rewritten as a fraction, but we're not going to write it as a fraction form, so therefore you, you can still reduce it. So 13 over 39 can be reduced to 
one to three. And I'm also going to show us another way to look at it. So one to three. Odds against the event. So we know we're going from 39 to, mm -hmm. so 39 to 13, which we know can be reduced to three to one. Right. So here we are using our odds and probability circles. Now, put a pin in it right here. I want to say that when we are filling in our odds and probability circles, if we see that we can simplify our numbers, you can do that. Go ahead and do it right then. So you see how we had our circles talking about our cards. 13 were hearts, 39 were not, our total was 52. We can then simplify our chart or um, circles here by simplifying our numbers. So let's see if I can draw that. So knowing that, here's my total, here's my heart, no heart, right? So this is my reduced, reduced graph. It looks kind of funky, but that's it. Okay, so I have 13, but 13, all of these are divisible by 13. So 13 goes into 13 one time. 13 goes into 39 three times. And 13 goes into 52 four times. So these are equivalent, right? Because we know eventually we're going to simplify our fractions. So if you see, after you finish filling in your table, or I call it, let's call it your odds and probability pair um, triangle. Then if you see that you can simplify it, then it's probably your best bet to go ahead and do it there. So then when you're actually answering your questions, then you could go ahead and have your simplified answer right off the bat. So when they asked us for the probability of the event happening, then right here, we could have said one over four. The probability of the event not happening, three over four. Odds in favor, one to three. Odds against, three to one, right? So it's like factoring. Factoring at the beginning helps us to simplify our answer at the jump instead of at the end. So it's okay if you don't reduce, right? But you see it's helpful because eventually our answer is going to be reduced, okay? Just wanted to put a pin in. All right, now let's look at 28. Now this problem, I'm probably not gonna have uh, on the test. I think I'm gonna probably take it off, but I wanted to talk about it just in case. So, um, I'm because I think that, I'm not sure if I went ahead and take it, uh, removed it from the homework, but it may be on the online um, review if you're doing that. So it says, suppose we go over to Jefferson County to the JCKC and want to bet on a dog named Snail Puppy. His odds are seven to one. Based on his name, which is accurate, not an opposite sort of thing, okay, accurate, and his odds, right, do these seem like the odds in favor or the odds against him winning? Okay, now think about it. If you've never been to a, a race track or dog track, horse track, anything, you can kind of still think about what's happening. Okay, so you're at this racetrack and let's go ahead and we can just 
draw our, our diagram. So you have the racetrack, and here you have our graph, right? Our triangle. So you have, uh, you hope he wins. So you got win, uh, then you got no win, right? And then you have total. Now, you have this dog called Snail Puppy. Now, would you bet on somebody named Snail Puppy? I don't know. Maybe you were optimistic about him. I don't know. But it's a slow dog. It says that his name is accurate. If his odds are seven to one, okay, seven to one, then based on his name, you know, and his odds, which one do you think? Is this odds in favor or odds against? Okay, so I would go with odds against, wouldn't you? If I don't want to bet against him, you know, that he's going to win. So this would be seven to one, which means our total is eight. So with this type of thing going on, there are places, of course, in the world where that's what they bet on, you know, odds against somebody not winning instead of just winning. These places are called uh, paramutual uh, wagering establishments. They, they, we don't really need to know about that in any detail about this, but just know that based on just what they're telling us here in this write-up, we can deduce that we're talking about the odds against what's happening. This is a slow dog here, right? We don't want to bet on him. But they like betting on dogs, and that's what they focus on. They bet on, want you to bet on those dogs or animals or, or horses or whoever it is that's trying to win. Could be fake or real, but they're betting against them winning, okay? So there was a question that might be, I'm probably going to take off the, the test. Right, but I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer is odds against. Okay, that's going to be the answer. And it's these uh, places, and they're called, let me write it. I think I can squeeze it with my handwriting. Okay. Paramutual establishments. All right. And they're wagering establishments. So they're focused on odds against. Okay. But probably going to take that one. Let's go to 29. All right. Again, you can pause and you can do the rest of the problems on your own and then we can talk about them. Okay. So this would be a really good place to pause and finish out the rest of the lesson all the way to number 20, uh, 33. And then we'll come on back. Okay. So number 29, let's roll through and see what you got. All right, so let E equal drawing a picture card from a standard deck of cards. So here they're telling us that it's a standard deck of cards, so we know what the total is. All right, the total is 52. All right, and then there, what's the event? Drawing a picture card, okay? So drawing a picture card. So we have picture. No picture, all right? Keep your, uh, your labeling simple. What are you doing? Picture, no picture. Um, a number, no number. And it'll tell you, keep it simple. All right, so here, that's us to find probability of the event happening. 
So remember now we have to finish filling in so we can actually answer the question. So it says, drawing a picture card from the deck. How many picture cards do we have in the deck again? Right, 12. So how many non-pictures do we have in the deck? Non-pictures, 40. Okay, remember they add up to be the 52 and they do. But look, it looks like we can simplify this. If you want, let's go ahead and simplify our picture. So we're gonna draw it again. So or <clears throat> we can have well, let me make it a little bigger. Okay. Let's put it over here closer to the work too. Looks like a scary face. Okay, so I have a 12, a 40, and a 52. I can simplify that. Uh, three, this is four. So four can go into uh, all of those, right? Four goes into 12 three times. And four goes in there 10 times. And four goes into 52 13 times. There's our total. This is our no picture and picture. Okay. So we simplify it now. So now I'm ready to go ahead and write my information and I don't have to simplify my fractions later on because I just did it. All right. So the probability of the event happening, we should have gotten 3 over 13. Right? 3 over 13. Probability of the event not happening, okay, 10 over 13. Odds in favor would be okay, 3 to 10. And then odds against, just flip it, 10 to 3. All right, pretty good. Let's go to the next page. All right, the odds against an event are three to two. So odds against an event is three to two. So we know what we're talking about, all right? So here's event, they didn't give us any specific type of event, so we're gonna just say uh, event, no event total, right? So the odds against would mean that I'm gonna start from right and go to the left. So this should be my lead off with the three, going to the two, all right? Add those up, I get my total number of five, okay? So now I'm ready to answer my questions. Probability that the event happened would be two over five. Probability of E not happening would be mm -hmm, three over five. And the odds in favor of it happening, two to three. You see how quickly it goes, okay? Once you get your circle set up, you've got everything labeled, all the numbers filled in, all you're simply doing is just going in a direction that it's telling you. Probability for, probability against. Odds, right, for, against. That's it. Number 31. You notice they didn't give us our own circles. We gotta draw them sometimes. All right, so here we are. We know we're gonna need them. Go ahead and draw them. Okay. So given the odds in favor, we know where we're starting, of an event are 20 to one. 
And they want to know what is the probability of the event. So here they're just asking us one question. So again, we have event happening. Uh, no event. And total. Okay, so they're giving us odds in favor. So we know we're going to start here and work our way across. So they're starting us with a 20 and going to a 1, right? And then add that together, we get our total of 21. So now they want us to know, want to know what is the probability of the event. Probability of the event would be 20 over 21. So probability of the event is 20 over 21. Right? Here's our next one. All right, so we need our circles. Right. Draw those. We know this is going to be our total. Now let's read the problem. If the probability of winning a race is 1 over 100. So they're giving us probabilities and we're going to odds. So the probability of us winning is 1 over 100. So we know that our total goes here of 100. And the probability of us winning was 1 over that. So 1 goes here in our um, upper left circle which is the event that it did happen. So this is win and no win. Okay, so we're talking about a race. So if this is a one, this has to be 99. Okay, so they want to know what are the odds against winning? So the odds against winning would be, mm -hmm. so odds against is 99 to one. All right. And our last one lesson. All right, here we are. We know we're gonna need our circles, let's do it. So when you get to the homework or the test, you read the problem. And if they want you to go from odds to probability or probability to odds, then you'll know you need to draw your circles. Given the odds against, right there's the lead up, odds against having a quiz today is 40 to 1. What is the probability of not having a quiz today? So we're talking about a quiz. So we have Quiz, no quiz, and our total. Okay. All right. So, odds against having the quiz today was 40 to 1. So, we know we're going to start at the right and work our way to the left. So, this is our 40 and our 1. Add those up. Our total is going to be 41. All right, again, you gotta pay attention to what they're giving you. They gave us odds against, so we know we had to put the 40 in the right circle, going to the left circle, and the one goes there. Now they want us to tell what is the probability of not having a quiz. No. Quiz. Probability of no quiz, 40 over 41. All right. I hope we feel good about converting our odds to probability and back again, making sure we get familiar with our odds and probability circles and our triangular uh, circle that helps us to convert those. 
making sure we're paying attention to what they are starting us off with. And that helps us to know where those numbers go in our circles. And then finding the missing piece. Once we find the missing piece and have everything filled in, we should be able to answer any one of the three or four questions that they're going to ask you. Okay? All right. That's it. That's the end of our lesson. Have fun with the homework. And I'll see you this week. And hopefully, we'll be ready, good fashion, for the test. Make sure you are getting prepared to start with your review. I will release the answers um, by the end of the week so that you can start reviewing and checking your answers uh, as soon as possible, okay? Um, I may have a um, answer, question and answer session if you, um, with any of the questions on your test review to um, strengthen up any issues that you may have. So I will give you information on that this week if um, I am going to be able to do that or not. I'm still working out some logistics on how that's going to work um, with us and uh, how we're going to group that. And I think it should be fine, but there are a couple of things I need to talk with uh, tech support about first before I say, yes, I will do. Okay. All right. Have a great week. And I look forward to uh, answering your questions. All right. See you later.